originally launched in 1944, this vessel began life as a motor torpedo boat or MTB, part of a class designed for speed and agility during the Second World War. Though now rebuilt into a motor yacht with only the original hull remaining, its wartime origins remain a significant part of its story. MTBs were compact yet powerful vessels, powered by petrol or diesel engines to outmaneuver larger warships and deliver devastating torpedo strikes. This transformation from a wartime craft to a modern motor yacht is a testament to the durability and adaptability of its design. Constructed by Vosper in Southampton, this particular MTB served in active duty during the war, operating as part of the Royal Navy's 9th Motor Gunboat Flotilla before being transferred to the Dutch Navy's 2nd MTB Flotilla. When the owners found the boat 40 years ago, it still bore the scars of active service with several bullet holes in her hull. Motor torpedo boats like this one were known by various names across different navies, while the Royal Navy and Royal Canadian Navy used the designation MTB. Similar craft served under different terminologies worldwide, such as the German Schnellboot or E-boats, Italian MAS boats and Soviet TKA or torpedo cutters. Despite their size, MTBs were a critical asset for naval operations, capable of striking larger vessels and conducting reconnaissance. This transition from a wartime MTB to a preserved functional vessel demonstrates both the adaptability of these boats and the dedication of their caretakers to preserving naval history. Guys, I really cannot wait to show you around uh, this boat. She really, really is spectacular. Um, unlike anything I've been on before, you know, the fact that when you think about it, this boat did actually see active service in the Second World War, uh, and that she's here now, still running, still completely usable as a livable boat, I think is, uh, you know, testament to the owner uh, and the owner's family in terms of the amount of passion and hard work uh, they put into this boat. So I really cannot wait to show you around. Uh, before I do, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it really is important. Uh, basically, the more subscribers I get, the more boats like this I can get on. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Let's crack on with the yacht tour. It really is amazing to think when you stand here next to this vessel that she saw active service in World War II. So she was built in 1944, so towards the end of the Second World War. And initially she was powered by three Rolls-Royce engines. Vosper designed MTBs like this one were typically powered by three marinized aircraft engines, often Rolls-Royce Merlins or Packard V12s. This setup enabled speeds of up to 40 knots. She would have had a general purpose machine gun forward. Uh, and also on this part of the deck, she would have had two torpedoes and another two torpedoes slightly aft. So this superstructure was completely new when she went through her rebuild, that wouldn't have been there uh, when she was an active service boat. Uh, and her other two torpedoes would have been slightly aft, both obviously facing outward, both the aft torpedoes and the forward torpedoes. And also as well, she would have had another general purpose uh, machine gun on her aft deck. So yeah, it really is uh, an honor to be here and to film this boat and to show you around. And I'm really looking forward uh, to taking you on board. Uh, you know, as my subscribers know, as someone who served in the Royal Navy, uh, to be on board a boat like this that would have seen active service uh, really is something special. Uh, but anyway, let's get on board and I'll show you around. So we're going to board the boat via this starboard access gate over here. Wait, just quickly, if you are a member of my YouTube channel, uh, then I will be uploading a members only video that shows us coming back alongside. Uh, so if you want to see the 
unique footage of us coming back alongside from both the wheelhouse and from the upper deck, uh, then if you want to become a channel member, just click on the link in the video description. Uh, but anyway, let's carry on with the yacht tour. And we jump on board, make sure we don't fall in. And of course, something else that she would not have had uh, when she was a torpedo boat is a Portuguese bridge, but look at that. So let's head forward and we'll show you the deck gear up here first. And look, we've got a skylight there that leads down into the accommodation area. And of course, we'll check out that area a little bit later on in the boat tour. Here we have the windlass down there on the deck for the anchor. And look, if we look aft, look at that beautiful superstructure. Absolutely stunning. Two big spotlights there, one on the port side, another one over there on the starboard side. Boat's hall and amidships there on the brow. But yeah, look at these windows. These are clear view windows and they use a spinning glass disc to clear rain, spray and debris, ensuring excellent visibility for the crew in challenging conditions, a critical feature for safe navigation. A seating area just forward of the wheelhouse there, look. But yeah, look how much space we've got here. And obviously we've got that, that allows some natural light into the accommodation areas. Another gate over here on the port side gives us access out onto the foredeck as well. All right, let's spin around. Another boarding gate over here in the boardwalks. And obviously we've got a port access door into the wheelhouse. But one of the things that sticks out to me as I walk along here is just how wide these side decks are. And I love the fact you've got this overhang up here. And look, even these features here, these lights, uh, LED lights, but when you first look at them and when they're actually turned on, um, they look like the sort of lights that would have been on the boat uh, in the 40s. So I was talking to the owner earlier on about, you know, where did these lights come from? Because they're very hard to come by. And there's only a few shops here in the Netherlands where you can get something like that. But I just think they really add to the overall feel of this boat. And it, again, it makes you feel like you're on something really, really special. So over here, aft, obviously, we have the cockpit area. We've got a dining table there. And of course, some seating facing aft and some freestanding furniture over there. Uh, and if you are wondering, so this raised deck section of the aft deck, uh, that is actually for the crew accommodation. Uh, so we'll go down there and have a look around in a minute. Let's head over here onto the starboard side. And of course, you've got another transom gate over here that leads out to the ladder that gives us access down into the water. And look, we've got a little swimming platform just down there as well. If I pan back up and show you the aft section of this absolutely beautiful boat. And I think what we will do now is let's go up this ladder so I can show you up here. So it's not actually a flybridge because there are no controls up here, but it is a sun deck. And look, you've got somewhere where you can stow the tender, thanks to the crane over here on the port side. And as you can see, when not in use, that ladder just rolls back up into place up there. But over here on the sun deck, we've got some seating over here on the starboard side. And of course, we have our radar mast. And as you can probably tell, thanks to those hinges, if you need to lower the radar mast to reduce your air draft, then you can, of course, do that. Uh, we've got a radar deflector just underneath the radar. And obviously our aerials are up there as well. And over here on the left-hand side, uh, we have an access hatch. And when you descend down that hatch, it takes you straight in to the wheelhouse. So yeah, obviously the covers are on at the moment for the seating, because we are mid-November in the Netherlands and it's very cold. So I'm looking forward to getting back into the warmth of the saloon, which is where we're gonna to head to now. And by the way, if you are wondering, that is a classic fed ship. And I did make a video about that boat as well. And you'll find that on my YouTube channel if you wanna check that out a little bit later on. Okay, let's descend back down the ladder. And look, even this, even touches like that. Look at that, it does really have an original kind of feel, an original aesthetic. And it adds a really nice element. And also as well, if I just kneel down here, you can see the shear uh, on the deck as well, raises up a few degrees 
as you head forward. So yeah, very nice. And look, the other thing as well, we do have some heaters up there. So we've got two heaters, another light, some midships up there, huge window leading into the saloon. And look, we've got a CCTV camera up there as well. The elegant cockpit table includes built-in bottle holders, a practical feature for keeping drinks secure while underway. Okay, right, let's head in, into the warmth. Okay, so straight away on the left-hand side, you see lots of cabinetry there, loads of space on this boat to stow away all your drinks and cutlery and everything else that you wanna be taking with you on your voyages. Over on the starboard side, an L-shaped seating area. Obviously a table there and some freestanding furniture. And look, if I just come and sit over here, just to show you the view. Again, look, as I'm sat down here, you can see the angle of the shear as we face forward. But look, loads of windows in here as well. So you're getting lots of natural lighting, indirect lighting up there in the deck head. And look, we've even got a bell over there as well. And I might be tempted to ring the bell. Let's see, but first, let me show you over here. We've got some more storage. Open up that and we find a Dometic fridge in there. Some power points up there, look. And of course, over here is where we have the bar. So when you're underway or when you're anchored or alongside and everybody's looking at your boat because she's just so beautiful, you can sit here with a beer and have a toast with your friends as you take in the view. All right, let's head behind the bar area to reveal the galley. Of course, under here, lots of storage, look. Walk all the way along, you can see loads and loads of cupboards, keep all your stuff. Uh, we've got a four burner induction hob over there and a cooker underneath. And look, extractor fan up there. And two sinks over here, it's two stainless steel sinks and a serving area there. And under here, of course, we have a dishwasher. So you can actually live on board this boat. Uh, the owner was telling me earlier on that uh, he stayed on board with his family for nine months, actually. So it is a liverboard, and you'll see as we walk around uh, just how well laid out everything is for the liverboard lifestyle. But I love the fact that when you stand here, you can have a conversation with the captain as you're prepping a meal because you can open up that there, so the two parts seamlessly connect with each other. And look up here, we have a window over there and another one over there, and they can both be opened up as well. But before we go into the wheelhouse, let's just stand here and take in that view. Look at that, it's just such a special boat. And let's sit over here and ring the bell, okay. I could not resist. And look, here we have the ladder that takes us back up onto the sun deck, look. We saw that just a minute ago. So another way of getting up there um, as and when you need to. And here we have the wheelhouse. Of course, big old ship's wheel there, look. And if you really need to spin it around quickly, you can grab hold of that. Engine control lever over there on the left-hand side, all of the switches. The telephone over there, and you'll see when we go in the master cabin in a minute, there's a telephone down there. So if you want to ring up and order some drinks, uh, ask someone to bring down some scran, you can, of course, do that. Uh, thanks to the phones, which uh, I love it. I love that touch. All the dials over here, of course, look. Wiper control switch, Rain Marine multifunction display over there. And of course, VHF radios over here as well, autopilot. And look at that, that's how you know you're on a boat that is made for going out in pretty much any weather conditions. Normally you'll find one of these windows on a boat, but to have two on there. And I wonder if that is the original compass. Interesting to know. Over here on the brow, we've got the controls for the Onan generators, a depth sounder over there, and more controls. And again, you'll notice, look, we've got something to grab onto up here as well. So we're underway, you know, punching through the big stuff. You've got things to hold onto. You've got some speakers up there in the deck head as well. And over here, on the right-hand side, uh, we have a chart table with a chart light 
over there as well. So if you want to get your paper charts out, uh, you can do some traditional kind of navigation. And of course, over there on the right hand side, we've got the door that leads us out onto the starboard side deck. And there we go, look, Rainbow International Ship, Shipping BV. So we've got the ship's plate on there as well. And also, you'll see, you've got somewhere where your guests can sit uh, whilst you are underway. But yeah, absolutely fantastic, look at it. You know, when we were out on the sea trial and, you know, watching the owner and everybody else do everything in terms of, you know, controlling the boat, because she doesn't have a bow or stern thruster, uh, it really is old school ship's handling on this boat. And look, something else I noticed as well, you can open up that window, which is really good for ventilation up here if you are somewhere nice and warm. Right, let's descend down these stairs into the accommodation area. And again, look, lots to grab onto. You know, this is not a show boat. This is, this is a boat that is, you know, been designed and built for usage. As I say, the owner did live aboard for quite some time. Um, right, I think what we will do, we will head forward I think we'll start up there and then we'll come back down this way because I want to show you uh, the owner's cabin first. But look, I thought I'd come up here and quickly show you another access point out onto the upper deck there. And this is what you step onto, these two little steps there. Right, so just to orientate ourselves, port over to there, starboard side over there. All right, let's head through here. And here we have the master cabin. So look, we'll walk through here, come down this step, a large double bed over there. And something that I really love is this work area. Look, so you can set your laptop up over there, um, do some work in between navigating to points A and B. But yeah, you've got a really good workspace here. And more cabinetry and look, some shelves, keep all your stuff on there. And there we have the telephone ship's telephone straight up to the wheelhouse. So yeah, you can order your morning coffee without even having to get out of bed, uh, which is never a bad thing. Lots of headroom down here as well. We've got a TV over there on that bulkhead and uh, lots of hanging locker space over here. So if you're talking about buying this boat and your partner says, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know where I'll keep all my stuff. Look, no excuses because we've got lots of hanging locker space. Standard Royal Navy salute as we are on a uh, Royal Navy boat. Twin sinks, stainless steel sinks over there. A little porthole up there. You can open that up for some ventilation down here if you want to. Open this up as well, look. So here are some more storage with some linen in there, some towels. And look, I love that. Somewhere else to keep all your stuff. Right, let's shut that back up. Have the shower in here, look, decent sized shower. And there we go. Right, let's come back out here, spin around. Take you back through this space. Open up this and look, another wardrobe. So yeah, you definitely are not gonna run out of space to keep all of your stuff on here. There's absolutely tons of it. And over here we have the head, of course, and there we go. All right, let's come out here. Let's open up this one. And here we have a twin cabin. The controls over there, the audio system, two portholes in here. But yeah, very spacious. Again, lots of headroom in here. And look, if you've got really demanding guests and they want to phone up and pre-order their coffee in the morning, They've got access to a phone in here as well. And we have look, a locker here underneath that berth. Reading light up there, look. But yeah, very spacious, very cosy. And look, if we just shut that door and open up this one. There you go, look, you can get access into the wet head. But just to make it easy, let's go in via this way. So obviously you've got the sink there, look. More cabinetry underneath to store all of your stuff. Another porthole over there. And of course here we have the handheld shower. 
and the toilet over there. Remember, this boat was built in 1944, so when she was built, uh, you know, none of this would have been here. All you see now uh, was put in place during a rebuild. But yeah, look, another sink over there, look. A shower up there. And there is the toilet. Right, let's walk over that threshold there. Take a step over, open up this and show you inside. We have another head in there with the sink. A little mirror over there and a cupboard underneath. And spin around. And if you're wondering where the washer and the dryer are located, here we have the washer and the dryer. Mele as well. And we'll shut that back up. As I say, if you want to bring all your stuff on board and just disappear for a couple of weeks, you can do that with this boat. And look, I'll just open up this as well to show you what's behind here. We have the chain locker. So let's shut that back up. There we go, we'll spin around. But yeah, let me know what you think of this accommodation area. I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, I think the layout down here is really good. And then we have, look, the light prism up there that allows some more natural light into this space. Okay, let's head back up here and back up into the wheelhouse. And now I'm gonna take you into the engine room. The other thing that the owner was telling me about this boat is that she was actually uh, used as a charter vessel uh, for a short period of time, uh, you know, which I think is absolutely incredible. And by the way, if you are looking to charter a boat, uh, feel free to get in contact with me. It doesn't matter what boat size or where in the world you're looking to charter. Uh, I can arrange that for you. Right, let's head over here because we're going to get access down into the engine room by removing this seat. <sighs> Turn the lights off. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's still nice and warm down here, so let's descend down and show you into the belly of this beautiful boat. Before we talk about the machinery, let's listen to the engines running. Although after a few seconds, the noise cancelling software on my microphone tries to fade out the engine noise. The boat is powered by twin GM Detroit 12V71N diesel engines, each producing 525 horsepower. Installed in 1981, they replaced the original petrol engines used during the boat's wartime service. These diesels offer improved efficiency and reliability, and their closed keel cooling system ensures optimal performance, even in challenging conditions. Together, they give the vessel a cruising speed of around 10 knots. She is fitted with a 15 kVA generator and a 3 kVA generator, both equipped with wet exhausts. Here we have one of the generators there, look. And another one over there. And over here we have the Kubola heating system as well. Now, if you're wondering about how we get access into the crew accommodation, here we go, look, walk through here. I've not actually been in here yet, so I'm gonna say it as I see it. Again, very spacious area. So you can fit three members of the crew down here. Got a bunk over there, look. Another one over there. Another one there. And if the crew needs to get access out onto the upper deck, uh, without going through the guest area, they can get access, thanks to that ladder, and up through that hatch. But again, look, lots of natural light coming in here. These four portholes all open at the moment. So it feels nice and fresh in here. Have the controls there for the heating. 
a CD player up there. And look, the crew definitely are not going to be wanting for space when it comes to where they can keep their stuff because we've got plenty of space thanks to all this cabinetry. Absolutely everywhere. But yeah, I think this is a really nice spacious cabin for a boat of this size and obviously for a boat, uh, you know, it was originally built in 1944. And if we open up this, here we have the wet head, shower over there, the sink and the head there, look. Let's spin around. And in here, okay, it's like a switch room. Now, can I find the light? Probably not. Ah, where's the light? I can't find the light, but look, there we go. You can always rely on your iPhone for a very bright LED. But there we go. I'm sure the switch is probably right in front of me, but easier said than done when you've got a camera in one hand and you're trying to talk your way through a boat tour. So there we go. That's the engine room, the crew accommodation. Let's head back up now onto the main deck. Again, look, if you're wondering about what you grab onto, you've got plenty of stuff to hold onto as you descend and ascend the engine room. The boat has a decent fuel capacity with twin tanks holding a total of 3,200 litres or around 845 US gallons. Additionally, her freshwater capacity is 2,200 litres or around 581 US gallons. At a cruising speed of 10 knots, her range is roughly 700 nautical miles, but don't quote me on that figure. And it depends, of course, on sea conditions and engine efficiency but she makes an ideal boat for exploring the coastline. Wow, what a boat. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look around here. Um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the Vault Yacht Brokers uh, for inviting me over to Loose Threat to come and film this boat. Uh, a big thank you to the owner as well uh, for letting me come on board and chatting to me about this boat and how much it means to him and his family. It really has been an honor to be on board and show you around. Now, as you might expect at the time of making and uploading this video to my channel, uh, this beautiful vessel is currently listed for sale. Now, if you want to find out more about that, I'll leave a link to the Volks website in the video description. Uh, so feel free to go and have a look and check out the full specification uh, of this outstanding vessel. You know, I know I've said it before at the beginning of the video, but you know, someone that served in the Royal Navy uh, to come on board a boat like this uh, that saw active service and you know saw so much, it really has been an honor. You can just imagine. Uh, what the men on board must have gone through, you know, when they were out launching their torpedoes, manning the guns up on the fore deck and the aft deck. Uh, yeah, and to think that here she is still being used, you know, 80 years later, uh, really is uh, phenomenal. And as I say, it just goes to show uh, the amount of passion that's gone into this boat. So if you are interested in becoming her new owner, uh, then make sure you check out the link that I'll leave in the video description. Uh, also as well, if you haven't already, I do have a free newsletter that you can sign up for. Uh, if you're interested in explorer yachts, trawler yachts, expedition yachts, uh, coastal explorers, then please feel free to sign up for it. Um, I like to keep everybody up to date in terms of what's going on in the wonderful world of explorer yachts. So please do sign up for that uh, if you haven't already. And also as well, uh, if you do have access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, please feel free to get in contact with me. Uh, you can send me an email, john at yacht-boy.com, uh, or you can get in contact with me uh, via social media. You can come and find me on Instagram. Uh, just look for yacht underscore boy. Uh, but anyway, again, thanks for joining me. I've really enjoyed showing you around. Uh, I can't wait to read your comments to see what you think 
about this beautiful boat. But anyway, from the engine room, I'm gonna sign off. So until next time, fair winds and following seas. <laughs>